Uh, hello and welcome back to episode 2 of the Ursina Engine tutorial series. Today I will be teaching you how to display text on the screen and use a keyboard user input. So basically you'll be able to tell when someone's pressing a key on the keyboard. And well, the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a key press that turns this cube green and we're going to have text down here that displays red cube when it's red and green cube when it's green. Here we've got our program from last time that draws the cube and makes it rotate. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, draw text to the screen that says red cube under the red cube. So the way we do that is pretty easy. Just going to go down here and make txt equals text. This is an inbuilt text entity thing inside Ursina that draws text to the screen for you. And the way you make it show up is text equals and then the string you want to show up. So text equals red cube. So, and uh, capitalization is important. This text is the text that actually draws it to the screen. And this text, the uh, lowercase t, is the text that tells it what to actually draw there. So if we execute this, it should, in theory, draw, yeah, red cube right there. Perfect. OK, red cube. And well, if I execute that one more time, you'll notice that it's exactly in the center and it's a bit small. Those are two things that we can fix relatively easily, so I'll get into that now. Actually, I'll, I'll keep this running so I can show you something in a second. Uh, where's my text editor? Aha. So if I do, first thing we're going to fix is that it's a bit small. So scale equals two. So if I say that, and then I just learned this yesterday. There's this little button down here. You can see reload code, reload textures, reload models. We changed the code. So if I hit F5, now the scale is bigger. And I didn't have to bother re-executing the code. That is something I actually didn't know the Yersina engine could do and makes it much more of a joy to work with than any other framework I've played around with, like Love2D or Pi Game. I've never tried Monogame, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have that feature either. It's quite nice. So we've changed the scale, but the position is still... I want it to be down here and centered. I played around with this a bit yesterday. And if you do one or negative one, it goes pretty much all the way across the screen. So you want to do something like 0.2. So now if I reload this, uh, that went the wrong way. So maybe I want negative 0.1. Reload that, negative 0.2. Uh, not quite, negative 0.15. Uh, that's closer. Negative 0.19. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be able to read point. Let's just do point uh, 0.13. Let's see what that shows up as. I don't think it can tell point 0.1. Uh, I'll just leave it right there. That's good enough for now. So that's how you move it around on the x-axis. And we can do the same on the y-axis. So if we do y equals point 0.1. No, I want it to be negative 0.2. Ah, yes, there we go. All right, that looks nice. We have it down here in the corner now, and it's it's nice and readable. So we've got it here, and we've got it scaled and positioned correctly, and maybe we should make it the same color as the cube. So to do that, it's the same as up here, just color equals color dot red. So now if I hit F5, it is red text. That's a little hard to read on the gray background, so maybe I'll just leave it default. Whoops. So then I go back and I have five and it's back to white. Now, now that we've gotten how to draw text to the screen out of the way, I don't know how to use fonts or anything fancy like that, but that'll be in a later episode if I ever figure it out. Now we're going to use keyboard input to when we hold down the Z key, it's going to change the color of the cube and the text to say green cube instead of red cube. In order to do this, we need an if function in the update. So if held keys Z. Now this is basically 
Held keys is either a zero or a one, depending on whether or not the key is held down. Oh, hang on a second. I just had an idea. So, uh, this is the Z key without being pressed. And it's a zero. So it's saying that this is either false or a zero, depending on how you're using it. And then this is a Z key that's been uh, Z key that's been pressed, and it equals. Whoops. A one. So if you're trying to move around or something like that, and you need a numerical value from the key, then this is what you get. Otherwise, in an if statement, this would be. This is true, and this is false. So to go back to what we were doing, we now have an if held key Z. So if we're holding the key down, if that's true, and we're actually holding the key down, then we want to change the color of the cube and the text in the text. So for the color of the cube, we need red cube equals color dot green. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Red cube dot color equals color dot green. So now, red cube dot color. So this inside the red cube entity is being changed from color dot red to color dot green. Now, if we go down here and we take the txt dot text equals green cube. Now we have, uh, it's accessing txt.txt. So in the txt entity, it's taking the text string and changing it to green cube. So in theory, this should do what we wanted it to. Let me just save this and reload. Now if I hit Z, it's green cube. But it doesn't do anything once I let go of Z, so it's stuck as a green cube. That's because, if I go back here, that's because once held keys is true, all this happens, but then there's nothing to tell it what to do if held keys is not true. So for that, we're gonna use an else statement. An else just, it, it, it's what runs if this, if any if statement isn't true, then else will run instead. So if we take this and do red cube dot color equals color dot red, and txt dot text equals red cube f five and now this is red cube and if I hold down the z key it's a green cube with the text green cube I let go and it's back to being a red cube now we have a red cube and a green cube that we can change between with the z key so that's how you handle user input and that's how you display text to the screen. Uh, thank you for watching, and tune in next time if you want to learn more.